Today we're going to cook with morels. Now they are a fabulous wild mushroom that you can forage for in Oklahoma, but you've got to know what you're doing. And you also need to know whether or not you have any allergy to them before you try to eat them. So once you are sure of your identification, uh, if you have any allergy to any other type of mushrooms, you probably don't want to choose these. E even if you don't, you may have some uh, gastrointestinal issues with them. So start out small and work your way up until you know you're, they're going to agree with you. They come in different sizes as the season progresses. You don't need to choose uh, only one size for a recipe because you can cut them down to similar sizes uh, as uh, you go through the cooking process. But what you do need to do is make sure you clean them well. So that's where I've started here. First of all, I brush the mushrooms with a soft cloth or uh, because they're so uh, full of, of crevices and crooks and crannies. You really can't use a mushroom brush. You don't want to peel them, but you do need to try and get them clean. And as you can see, it's going to be real difficult to do. So I cut them in half because sometimes you'll see a lot of insects in here. I've talked to people who have found slugs in there. Uh, and so you want to get those out. So uh, the way we do that uh, is we use two or three uh, changes of salted water. Now you notice I'm only using a small amount of salt. It doesn't take a lot uh, to desiccate the insect and pull them out. And then you're going to pour cold water over them. And you're going to let them sit for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Now this also will remove any dirt that you uh, didn't notice. We want to keep them submerged, however. So what I usually do is take a paper cloth, a paper towel, and just put that over the top. And that will keep the top of them moist uh, and wet as this goes along. You're going to do that for 10 to 15 minutes. You're going to change the water, kind of rinse them off a little bit, repeat uh, twice so that they get a total of 45 minutes soaking. You don't want to put them a ton of salt on here. It's not necessary, nor do you want to soak them much longer than an hour at the most because they will start to absorb some of the, of the water to a much greater extent. And also you're going to lose some of the flavor uh, into that water. Once you've gone through three times with the salt water, make sure you drain them as well as you can. So I've taken the water off and now I'm going to uh, put them on a little bit of cloth here and try and pat them dry. Now because they have so many crevices here, there's no way you're actually going to get all the water off. But we're going to put them in a little bit of fat here and it would be nice if uh, we didn't have a lot of water. They're going to have juice come out of them later as well. So dry them as well as you can without crushing them uh, because we want to keep them in, intact as, what, as much as we can. I've got a 12 inch skillet here and to that I'm going to add a tablespoon of vegetable oil, either canola or olive oil are good choices. And then also two tablespoons of salted or unsalted butter. If you use salted butter, you can add a little bit less salt later on, uh, which is the way I'm going to do it because I just didn't have any of the other type here today. Okay, this is going good. You don't have to wait until the butter is completely melted. But do keep an eye on the butter because it will burn uh, on you. So uh, to that, I'm going to add about a half a cup of shallots. And you could use uh, onions. It just needs to be kind of a rough chop. It doesn't have to be finely diced by any means. And we're going to let that just cook for about a minute. And then we're going to start adding some of these other ingredients to it. Okay, I started with eight ounces of morels. And we're going to add those to the pan. What I'm doing is morels with peas and shallots. I don't think I'm, I told you what I was doing besides working with morels. So we're going to add the morels to the skillet. And then I'm going to add three different kinds of peas. I have snow peas, sugar snap peas, and English peas or sweet peas. I'm um, not going to add quite all of them to the skillet because I don't think they're quite all going to fit. Uh, but it's uh, eight ounces of each of these and then a cup of the, the regular peas. These I wanted to use fresh. You could use frozen, uh, but because morels are such a, a, a burst of springtime in my mind. I wanted to use fresh peas as well, which also uh, remind me of spring. So we're going to let these cook for about two minutes and we're going to add the English peas or the sweet peas um, and after that period of time because they won't take quite as long for cooking. And I'm going to add a cup of just regular peas. Now these if, uh, frozen peas will do fine, but go ahead and thaw them before you add them so that you don't uh, change the temperature too much. You want these to continue to cook. Morels do need to be cooked before you eat them, whether they are frozen or 
dried, you need to make sure you come back and uh, make sure they're cooked when you're ready to go. If you do find that you're fortunate and you find a whole lot of them, you can freeze them, but they do need to be blanched before you uh, put them in the freezer. Uh, and you can do that the same way you blanch other mushrooms, and you can find that information on the National Center for Home Food Preservation website. It won't be specific to morels, but it will tell you how to uh, prepare mushrooms for the freezer. If you don't do that, what tends to happen is they uh, tend to get bitter. Uh, and they don't keep as long. So uh, those are some things you want to watch out for. Now you can tell these are starting to be ready. You just want to cook this until the uh, morels are tender. So you can take one out and slice it if you choose. Uh, but these are probably about ready. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this, turn off the heat. Uh, and we've got a couple of more ingredients so that you can stir into this. I've got uh, somewhere between uh, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I would taste them to see how much this is going to need. And then also, I don't like to add a lot of other flavors that are going to cover the flavor of the morel uh, because it is so special. Uh, but I am going to add a little bit, maybe a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of lemon zest. So this particular one doesn't have a lot of garlic and some other things. There are so many ways to prepare uh, morels. Uh, you just, whichever method you pick, you want to make sure that that flavor of the morel is the feature and not the feature is, is garlic or uh, cream or something else. So you just want to get as much out of the morel as you can. Uh, this is uh, basically all there is to this one. Uh, it is uh, fairly easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of time once you get the morels clean. Cleaning the morels, however, is really important, so that soaking is important, and it's not something you can do ahead of time. It's something you need to do uh, right before you're ready to cook them, or they won't keep as long for you. So if you are fortunate enough to get some morels, I hope you'll give this recipe a try. It's morels with peas and shallots. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.